made it quake. People in the valley did fear and shake. God came down on Sinai. God came down on Sinai. He gave ten commandments one by one. God's finger wrote them on the stone. Moses was gone for 40 days. Israel lost faith, they did say. Make us a God that we all can see. As for this Moses, where is he? Aaron said, bring me your gold. Aaron said, bring me your gold. And I'll make for you a golden calf. Worship the golden calf, dance and laugh. And it goes on and on. Um, after the, you do it a couple of times with the kids, they really get it and they really, uh, uh, really, really enjoy these. I don't do these just in one class. The next time we start class, when we do our review, guess what we do? We do this. And we might do this for the next six weeks. We'll go through a bunch of songs that we've sung. And that is our review that helps get them ready for the new lesson material, which is what this session is going to be about. It's going to be about how do we take a child from where he is and get him to where we want him to be. But this is another song. Um, and again, this is from Sing a Story by Jewel Kendrick. It's, it's in your resource page, but I'll give you more information about that later. Okay? So in our last session, I can't possibly do the old ideas that I have here and that I have at home. But my desire in the few things I'm bringing is that you're going to have this little spark of, inf uh, of, of inspiration say, okay, I like that idea. Now here's what I'm going to do with that idea. Because um, all these ideas came from somewhere. I got them from somebody and I took them and kind of put my take on them, the flips and the flaps of the shapes idea. That was that was not new, but today we add the PowerPoint and we add these realistic images to these Bible stories so that we can make sure the children understand this is not just a Bible story. One I'm going to show this because we didn't do it to it last uh, last class period. Was being in the belly of a fish like this Ask the kids, what was it like being in the belly of a fish? Or was it like this? <laughs> we, we don't know. Because we don't know what. It's not just a Bible story. These stories really happened. They happened exactly the way God said they did. You've got to bring home that reality to the child in whatever way you can. I appreciated John's talk in chapel. So now I don't have to say some of those things. Let the children talk back to you. They may have a misconception somehow. What you said didn't translate into their little brain. And if you don't, if you make them be quiet and hush the whole time, they're not going to know that they got the wrong idea. So we need to let them talk. We need to understand how God designed them and so forth. This session is how to put them keep up. What do I need? Oh, one of them. Um, I found National Geographic magazine. It's December 1966. Uh, it's, and it's the, the, the session would be, uh, it's called Abraham, Friend of God. When I looked on here, I found nationalgeographicbackissues.com. Don't go there. <laughs> um, National Geographic sale, $4.99 for these back issues. No, 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 no. <laughs> you need to call National Geographic and tell them you want December 1966. And don't get just one, get two. Um, because something's going to happen to your first one. That's, um, that's, I've ordered two or three over the years, or you lose a picture or whatever. This relates to the last section. I know we've got some ladies in here that weren't here last time. Um, but everybody has a sheet like this. Those of you that are new, our session two, hook them and keep them. The focus of this, the main idea of this session, is we teach from the known to the unknown. Whether we realize it or not, that's that's what learning is. Children are like this. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures, hear them roar. Right? Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom, brother? Right? Never grow up. 
I'm from the gravy arose. Yeah, what, what's going on in the mind of a child <laughs> with all of what's going on in their little heads? <coughs> huh? Maybe doing? we don't sing them clearly. <laughs> <laughs> They're singing what they know. They don't know up from the grave he arose, necessarily. Okay, I want to tell you a story about a, a very inspired teacher of kindergartners. She was very creative, very um, just, just wonderful in this one time she had a brilliant idea she was teaching elijah going to heaven in the whirlwind and um, so she had her assistant teacher back in the corner turn on a vacuum when he went up to heaven and you know the teacher was all inspired and the, the kids were all excited and the next sunday they came back and she said all right boys and girls what happened to Elijah when he was taken to heaven? And this little girl said, he got sucked up by a vacuum. <laughs> so, what happened? There was a little bit of a disconnect, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So children, unless they live in Kansas or Oklahoma, or maybe Texas, they don't know what a whirlwind is, or much less a, a tornado. Let me show you this little cool little toy here that I just saw one day browsing the internet. And I went, oh, oh, that's cool. I can use that. All right, isn't that cool? My grandkids mm -hmm. love to play with this. You can make all kinds of different shapes. Okay, the idea is to get from here to here. What if I take this out? What happened? What just happened? What happened? Words. Disconnect. 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 There's a disconnect. There's a cut. There's a wheel missing. But what if the wheel was there, but these little protrusions, these little cogs weren't there? Disconnect, right? What if this what if this had been sitting on the shelf for a while and maybe it got rusty? You have metal cogs and pills, it got rusty and it just needed some grease. Um, there's a lot that can happen in this process. And when we teach Bible classes or sing some of these songs, the children can sing the song, but they've got a cog missing, so they don't know up from the grave he arose. They sing up from the grave, they see a rose coming out of the grave, <laughs> because that's what they know. Children walk, uh, crawl before they walk, they walk before they run. Children have to understand how to add before they can subtract. They have to understand how to multiply before they can divide, right? They have to know all of those things. How many times did my own children and, and my grandchildren sometimes, and even me as a teacher, children will leave the class and mom says, okay, what did you learn today? And they go, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, sometimes that's because they're little and they just don't remember in that moment. They'd rather go play with their friends. But sometimes it's they really don't know because it was just something was missing. There was, there was a disconnect there. So this session is about what can we do to help the child take the child from where he is to where he needs to be in order that the Bible lesson I'm teaching, the words of God that I'm teaching, are going to make sense in his little brain. Sometimes we need to give them that whole wheel with all the cogs. Sometimes maybe they're just missing a couple of cogs and things get stuck, or maybe it just needs to be greased a little bit. But we've got to take them from where they are to where they need to be so that the lesson makes sense. Um, where do we do this? I always do this right before the lesson. Sometimes it's a simple review. We might run through two or three songs that review facts. What have we been teaching? We look on the board. What have we been learning? And then we go right into the lessons. But many other times, there are other things we can do. Um, you guys have a copy of my uh, the lesson plan I use. My lesson plan is not inspired. It's not the only way to do things. But in your packet, you have this. I gave you one that's got stuff in it and one that's blank. What I do is this. I just put this in a file folder, and then the lessons that I'm working on down the line, and I'm now starting to develop lessons for next year. So I might have one of these, or I might have these in a notebook. But as I have ideas, um, I can just write them on here. You, you can put these in a notebook and do the same thing. But uh, up here, this section, this is information about your lesson. The main thing you must do as a teacher is clearly identify what am I trying to teach? What's the main idea of this lesson? If you look at the one you've got that's filled out, um, you're gonna you're gonna see 
how important that is. I put it in red. Okay, pre-class activities. I don't do anything pre-class. Oh, does anybody need copies of what we've got? There's another one here. Is, is anybody here? I have. There's an extra one here. Would you mind checking on that? Is it, we got a couple extra. Does anybody? Okay, I need we may have other people come in other sessions. All right, pre-class activities. I didn't even begin to bring stuff what I do before class. I have a lot of learning centers and a lot of activities we do, games. That's just another whole session in itself. But lesson readiness. Much of lesson readiness is reviewing previous materials so the child can recall what has already been studied. This is also very good for kids who are absent. Review is good for everyone. The activities, there are activities that you can do that grab the attention of the kids. It stimulates excitement and curiosity about what is to come. The next page. Then you have the Bible lesson. We should always emphasize this is from the Bible. It's all true. It's not fiction. We must constantly reiterate that. If it's in the Bible, it's true. Maybe you don't understand it and you don't see how it can be true, but it's true nonetheless. All right. Um, in my outline, in my lesson plans, you should always write out a lesson plan. I used to hate doing this, hated it, hated it, but I had to because that's, I had to give it to our, <laughs> our education minister at the time. I had to do it. Boy, I learned how valuable it is to write it out. Maybe you just want a skeleton outline here or flesh the whole thing out. Um, Describe the method you'll use to tell the story. You may use pictures, draw, draw as you tell, puppets, whatever you do, write it out here so you know what you're going to do, how you're going to present, present this lesson. Try not to do the exact same presentation absolutely every single week. My son, who has, my oldest son was very, very ADHD, went to a class where they were given three to four pages of single space question and answers. They started them on Sunday, they finished them on Wednesday. That's all they ever did. This was a wonderful, godly woman. Oh, she loved those kids and the kids loved her, but my son hated that class. Oh, did he beg us not to make him go the whole year he was in there. That's a shame, that's a shame, but we had to consider all of our students, some children would thrive like that. Some children won't. Um, but anyway, uh, describe what you're going to do, write it out. Lesson follow-up ideas. Oh my goodness, there's, there's no end to what you can do. I just wrote some ideas down here. And at the end, think about how well did that lesson go? Did it work really well? Was it a flop? Oh, I still had flops. I had a flop this year, just a few weeks ago. I'm like, well, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> so it happens to everybody. Keep your lesson plans. Keep them. I organize everything chronologically in my files. Everything is chronological. Um, and now I'm to the point where I have my current files and then I have sort of an overflow files. Periodically, I'll go through my old lesson plan and go, wow. I forgot all about that. That was really a good idea. Why don't I do it again? So I resurrect that idea and maybe replace something else. But it's really critical that you learn how to develop a main idea for that lesson. So you know what you're teaching. And when those kids have left that class, they know what they've learned. But what if their cogs and wheels aren't in place? Well, that's what we're, we're all about. In your handout. Well, I'm such a wonderful teacher. Oh my goodness, the kids love me. I give them Kool-Aid. Don't ever Kool-Aid in Bible class. What, you don't like salt in the Kool-Aid? <laughs> <laughs> this is where I completely lose their trust. Okay. Um, okay. All right. And then we have our, oh, well, you know what? I didn't have any, I didn't have any sugar, but I, it doesn't matter. And salt looks just like it, doesn't it? So I just put some salt in there. I mean, there's some sugar in there, but there's a lot of salt too. But, and the kids are gagging. You know? <laughs> why, did, why did you put, you know, they're just, you know, we're, we're, ha we're fun. There's this fun little, little exchange that we have. I'll let them all go to the bathroom, gag, do everything they have to do. And then we come back and say, why did we do that? Things. We're trying to treat this. Yeah. Well, let's sit down and have our Bible story today. And let's see how important it is that, that uh, we follow recipes. Do you think it's important that we follow recipes? Yes. <laughs> you see, they, they've got this fresh experience mm -hmm. now. And now we're going to go into the story of when 
uh, after Jericho, we go into the story of the Battle of Ai. Somebody didn't follow God's instructions, or maybe the golden path, or there's a bunch of Bible stories we could use that with. Some people do this after a lesson, they call it an application. I use it before a lesson, because then as we go through the Bible lesson, and we find out, I kind of mentioned, did this guy follow, did, did Achan follow God's recipe? Was he doing what God wanted him to do? No, no. Is that a bad thing? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's fresh. It's fresh in their mind. So I call this lesson readiness or wetting the sponge, priming the pump, whatever you want to call it. Making sure that child has all their cogs and wheels in place so that they get the main idea of the story. There are many, many times where I don't even have to make an official application lesson because they got it as we were going through the lesson. They got it and they don't forget it. They still remind me of this, that to this day. <laughs> over here, I've got an orange, green, and yellow um, visual over there. That's the first three lessons we always do in, in Bible class when I start the year, because I want them to understand certain things about the Word of God. The Bible is the most important book ever written because the words come from the mouth of God. I give everybody a, well, first thing we do is we say, I want you to put your hand up to your mouth and say, let's say some tongue. Everybody put your uh, uh, fingers up there real close and now say, Peter, Piper, pick a peck of pickled peppers. <laughs> what do you feel? What do you feel? Breath. You feel your breath. And I give them a mirror, do the same thing. Peter, Piper, pick a peck of pickled peppers. Oh, there's my breath right there. It disappears real quick. But get them to understand what, it, when we speak, we breathe out. Well, guess what inspired means? All scripture is inspired. It means God breathed or God spoken. So now they understand that the words come, the, the words in the Bible come directly from the mouth of God. And you can play around with that. But I, I spend two, three minutes, four minutes, maybe, letting them experience that because they're going to get real silly and go, you know, do all these funny things up in there. But we say a lot of fun little uh, tongue twisters. That's fun. So that's the introduction to that lesson. Then the next one, I give them a small little thing of Legos with no instructions. And I say, I say, okay, I'm going to get everybody one of these. Okay, I want you to put it together. And I want you to do it exactly like it's supposed to go. Make it perfect for me. Yeah. All right? Make it perfect for me. And they say, well, we don't have any instructions. But you don't need it. You guys are really good with Legos, right? Just go ahead and put those together. Put them together perfectly. Whoever puts it together perfectly, I'm going to get you $20. Well, of course, it's impossible. I give them a little whack. This could really drag on for the entire time. You got to you gotta stop them because it's it's not. Uh, so I give them three minutes, maybe. And then I say, all right, I'm going to pass out the instructions. Okay, here's the instructions. Now, do you think you could put it together correctly? Yeah, now we can do it. And again, you have to stop them because that could just go on and on and on and on. They don't come to Bible class and play Legos. Although, at the beginning of the year, they don't question why they didn't play Legos in Bible class. <laughs> they just don't question. So, and then I, and then I think, well, why do we do this? Why do we do this silly exercise after taking all the Legos up? And why do we do this? Um, at the beginning of the year, they don't understand that everything we do, all these activities have a meaning. But then our lesson, living without God's instructions is, is impossible. So God gave us the Bible to guide us. And these are these are removable. So living without God's instructions is impossible. So, um, and I'll let the kids finish these. And of course, we have memory verses for each one of these. Here's an interesting, the Bible is useful to us only if, only if, what is that? So. Before we get to that concept, we do an activity. Where's my computer? Uh, oh, here's the Legos. Yeah. Um, I actually have more than just boys in my classes. <laughs> there's, there's, there's girls, but you can see. Um, um, when the kids are engaged, when their minds are engaged, are you going to have problems? Mm -hmm. Generally, no problems. Okay, I bring just a collection of odds and ends or whatever, and I... Um, this year, I put them in a bag. I pulled it my Mary Poppins bag, and I had to reach way down there and like pull pull out one. Do you know what that is? 
no, what is it? We talked about it. I said, now, if you didn't know what that was, would you be able to use it? Blah, blah, blah. This is a level. This is this is a windshield wiper on my car, on my uh, old little car that my husband's got. Various things, whatever you have that's interesting around the house. Bring some things that they know, bring some things that they don't know, and let them play around. This is, this is the big fun one right here. This is an egg separator that I have. They really key in on this one for some reason. So I always buy a really cheap, like half dozen thing of eggs. And then I say, do you know what this is? Some, well, it has something to do with eggs. Do you know, would you know how to use it? No. Will it do you any good if you don't know how to use it? So you're talking about all of this. If, it, if you don't know what it is and you don't know how to use it, is it good? Is it useful for you? No. So then I let some of them crack eggs into this in a bowl. And sometimes it's messy. Sometimes it's not. So now you know how to use this, don't you? Do you think you could help your mom in the kitchen? Yeah, if she'll let me. <coughs> so but the main idea is that the Bible is useful to us only if we know how to use it. So each of those individual lessons are all about the Bible. And then we do various things. I think one of those is on my website. Um, Maybe, maybe this one. You can look at the, the lesson plan. I think it's on the kids Bible class ideas.com. There may be a lesson on that. I think there is. Um, here we go. There's that. All right. So in our categories, I'm sorry, let's go back to our categories. The, the theme of this session is we teach from the known to the unknown. The first category, those of you who weren't here, was food that teaches a lesson. Um, you might, there's something uh, called trust cookies. I actually have a recipe that you just throw everything in and you don't stir it. You just, then you bake it. And, and as the kids are throwing in, I say, trust me, this is going to be good because most kids know that you have to stir <laughs> stuff and then you bake it. But don't, no, don't, 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 don't stir these. Trust me, they're really going to be good. That's, a, that's an introduction to the story of Abraham and how he trusted God, um, but it's food. Uh, pictures that explore a word or a concept. Let me come around there. <laughs> I want you to be able to, to see these. Um, what's happening in this picture? What's, these are school children, right? Cheating. Yes, so you, you might ask children Children don't always have the words to describe, describe it. I don't know what to call it. Maybe I can't describe it, but I know it when I see it, right? So bring some pictures for kids, especially for younger kids. They just may not have the words. So this girl, I use this. This girl is being tempted to cheat. She may not actually be cheating yet, but she wants to. And we talk about what temptation is. It's a strong desire to want to do something, even though it may be uh, wrong, bad, or unwise. And then I use this as we go into Joseph's temptation. Uh, but they need to understand what tempted is. And you might find another, another picture. Um, okay, here's another word. Here we have the monarch Butterflies. <laughs> Let's get that up. So we've got the, the life cycle of a, a monarch butterfly from Caterpillar. So when we go from here to here, we can see him begin to transform, can't we? We see him, we see a transformation happening. You get where I'm going? Oh, look, here's a tadpole. Look, it's changing. It's transforming. It's being transformed. All right, I've got other pictures I didn't bring. Um, you could, you could uh, let the kids transform some popcorn kernels and eat popcorn during your Bible. Let's transform these popcorn kernels into, so they understand what being transformed or transfiguration is. Then you go into the transfiguration of Jesus. Um, that was a spiritual transformation. So there is some, some talk you would wanna do according to that, but you're giving the kids a word and an image so they can understand what it is you're trying to teach them. Here's another one that's funny. My four-year-old preschooler told me she couldn't go to school because we were out of oranges for her snack. <laughs> After a huge meltdown, will you keep me home from school tomorrow because I just cried a lot of tears and there's no more water in me? <laughs> Those are little ones. All right. I couldn't do my homework because my computer has a virus 
and so do all my pencils and pens. <laughs> what are these called? What are these kids doing? They're making excuses, aren't they? Oh my goodness. I don't have my homework. My dog deleted it. Well, that could actually be true. <laughs> the cat deleted it. I had once I teach at Bear Valley Bible Institute. I teach the women um, how to teach children's Bible Bible classes. And one lady brought me um, her hop step mat that she had made it uh, or made, and she said, "I can't turn this in. The dog ate it. I mean, it really did. She had laid it over the dog crate, and somehow the dog." got it and had shredded it in pieces. So I allowed her to have another week on that one. A couple of weeks actually. Um, but those are excuses, aren't they? Are these kids make an excuse? Don't these excuses sound silly to us? Yeah, these excuses sound silly. I got some that would really sound silly to us. Um, I can't listen to any more of excuses. Seriously, either do it or don't, right? <laughs> They're making excuses. What is an excuse? I got it back here because <laughs> I can't remember. It's what you say when you don't want to do something. It's what to say when you're trying to get out of something, right? Is anybody ever here ever not made any excuses? So we talk about excuses, blah, blah, blah. Have a little fun with it. Um, we have fun because fun is an emotion, right? And emotions can be tied to memory. There's there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, support that talks about emotions and how they're tied to memory. So sometimes we need to trigger some of these emotions. It can be fun, it can be sad, it can be just curiosity or just wonder um, what, at, at what's happening. Um, so those are our, oh, here's, here's another one I gotta show. Anybody ever see this on the, this is a mug shot. Anybody ever see this online? Um, this, this is a mugshot of a guy, a criminal, um, unbelievably handsome from the, from the human standpoint, right? Unbelievably handsome. Who's this guy? Terribly scarred face. He's a Marine. He's a decorated Marine. But how does he look? Man, it's scary. Yeah, somebody said scary, right? He looks scary. I don't know that I would want to be around him. Compare these two. Let the children talk about, because we need to let our children talk back to us so we understand what's in their head. Talk about the difference in these pictures. Who would you want to be friends with? Well, the kids that I teach, they're very sensitive. They've got amazing parents. They say, I think I might want to be friends with him because I think he did something good that we talk about. Yeah, he's a decorated veteran. He almost gave his life for somebody. What this guy do? I forget what he did, but it was bad. When he got out, he was signed to a modeling agency. Nobody cared what he was like on the inside. Nobody seems to care what this guy's like on the outside. So the, you see the concept where God, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. This is a good one to use before you teach, before you teach David. Um, so it's food that teaches, pictures that explore, a, a concept. Now let's go to objects displayed in the classroom. Okay, guys, our buttons. How many? How many buttons did you guys? How many? How many buttons? Somebody give me a guess. How many buttons did you say are in there? Two hundred and ten. Two hundred and ten. Anybody else? One eighty-five. Okay, let me write these down. Two ten. One eighty-five. Anybody else? You're low. I can tell you that. <laughs> you said 210, 185, 412. 412. Boy, are you close? 350. All right. Too low. You know how many buttons there are in this jar? Can you can you mm -hmm. On our good days. Wow. wow. Oh. There are how many buttons? Four hundred ninety. Four hundred ninety. Oh, mm -hmm. is that a lot of buttons? Ah, a lot of buttons. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of buttons. For younger children, if you're doing this for first grade, they're not going to understand 490. Mm -hmm. Pour these in a bowl. Mm -hmm. Is that a lot? Yes, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. So we want them to visualize a number in their head before we teach them what Jesus taught about forgiveness because it's just a number. It's just a number. It's the number of kids. We, you know, they they've got the cogs and the wheels in place for numbers in general, 
but we need to grease that wheel a little bit, a little bit more. And when we do something like this, so whatever you're doing, think about what do they need to know in this Bible lesson in order to understand it? What do they need to know? What do they need to have in place in their brain in order to grasp this Bible story? And if they grasp it well enough, you almost don't have to make application because during the Bible lesson, they've already gotten it. It's like, wow. When we go back here and did the did the geode pulling the geode out, did you hear the did you hear the gas? That's exactly what the kids do. They have an emotional reaction. And we don't have to have an emotional reaction to everything. I'm not, I'm not going there. But but they had a powerful reaction and they're going to remember that. And so they're going to get the lesson. Almost the older kids will get the lesson almost right away. The younger kids, you'll have to uh, maybe teach them a little bit more. Um, palm leaves over there. Um, that was an old sea in the bottom right over there. I had I was about to throw out a plant that I've had for years, and as I was literally putting it in the trash can, I went, like, oh, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I can use these leaves, so I cut them <laughs> off." And uh, I need to go to Goodwill and get a bunch of little T-shirts or something, and or something, and just. And so when the, when you're gonna on Sunday when you're gonna have the lesson about the triumphal entry, lay it lay a path out in the door, and the kids come in and walk on it. And then later, of course, they will need to act that that out. Give them some costumes if you want, but especially the little ones. I don't think older kids need to act this out. Uh, although I could be surprised. I've been surprised before. Um, Think about what you have before you discard something. So be a hoarder. <laughs> We're talking about it. We could easily be a hoarder. Yeah. Um, uh, that's just selective hoarder. Selective hoarder. I'm not a hoarder. I'm a Bible class teacher. <laughs> yeah. So palm leaves. Um, this right here. I wonder if anybody knows the story. Um, there's a couple of men down here. There's a man right here, and this is his armor bearer. They're over here. They're trying to burn down this tower, and there's people in it. There's a woman up here. She got an upper mills. Well, I'm telling the story. I'm not supposed to tell the story. This is laid out for the kids to break to. Well, this is what our Bible lesson is going to be about today. Anybody know what it is? No. And, and younger children, I would let them play, kind of play with this as they come in the class. Older children don't need to play with it necessarily. But then we have our Bible lesson. Um, I'm like, oh, ooh, accidentally, I knocked the guy. Oh, I knocked the poor guy over. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Um, when we do actually have the lesson, you're going to bring this in, and they've already, we've already piqued their interest, haven't we? We've already piqued their interest. Our Bible lesson is going to be about this. So you tell the story that the judge, who knows, starts with an A. He wasn't really a judge. Abimelech. This is the story of Abimelech when he tried to burn down the tower. It worked for him once, there are maybe twice, and so he was going to do it again. He was going to burn down this tower with all these people, but there was a woman who got an upper millstone and she threw it down on him and it killed him. So of course, after the story, this is our review game. <laughs> and they get to see if they can kill a bimble like by throwing it down. Oh, I love that. So, oh yeah, they love it. They love it. <clears throat> so uh, boys love some things more than girls. But this is, did you know that Goodwill has an outlet store in it? An outlet store. Yeah, you buy things by the pound. I went in there, I didn't find anything but this. I found this, the grandkids have played with it, and I thought, oh, a bimbalike. That's what I thought when I bought it. Oh, a bimbalike, I can, I can do a bimbalike, and I've got these little characters, and this is part of a skillet, whatever. Um, but it's kind of like stone, so it worked. You know, it, somehow it all comes together. But put it out there as the children are coming in. If you're going to do the story of Samson, put a wig that's got long hair, maybe uh, put some weights over there. Uh, if you've got a toy fox, uh, stuffed animal, put it out there and, and let the kid, this is not going to be our story for today. Does anybody know what the story is? They might, they might guess it, and that's okay. But if not, about curiosity. They'll say, is it the story of this? Uh, maybe. Or you can say, no. Develop, help them become curious. They will get accustomed to your antics. <laughs> Believe me, and sometimes they're antics, but they will get accustomed to your antics. And sometimes when I, now, uh, when I do these, after a while, the kids are thinking ahead. What 
What are we going to learn today? What are we going to learn about that fourth, fifth, and sixth is what I'm teaching right now. They're going to start thinking ahead. What's our lesson? What does this have to do with our lesson now? And that's a good thing. That Sometimes they guess it ahead of time. I said, well, you might be right. So you're going to have to listen up close. Um, but there's a lot of ways to do this. Make sure the kids have an experience that leads them into the lesson. You can't do this with every lesson, right? This is not gonna happen with every lesson. Sometimes we do the review. A good, solid review is enough to prepare them for the lesson, but sometimes there are these, these other things that are fun. Um, when we do the plagues, I strew these all over the room. I take them up the wall, you know, <laughs> and put them on the backs of the chair. I've got grasshoppers, I got flies, um, I've got frogs and you know, balls. Um, it's in a bucket, otherwise you'll never retrieve them all from your classroom. Um, just ping pong balls uh, as tail. Um, put those out. Now, I discovered with upper elementary, uh, they're not that impressed by this, but all the little kids that were walking by, all the younger kids were <coughs> Then they want to come in, they want to come in. The older kids just kind of walk by them as they're coming in, they go sit down at their desk. So, you know, it's more to impress the big kids. Than it. Yeah, it, you know, it's not that unusual for them somehow. But uh, younger kids, preschool, even, even early elementary, yeah, this would be a, a big deal, I think, for them. So I don't take several hours to put these all around the room and stick them on. I don't do that anymore because <laughs> it's just not effective for the older kids. Like I want it to be, I want it to be a wow. And it's just not. Um, but but that's that's fun to do. Um, um, it's almost Halloween. Go and find an altar. Like a cauldron. See? This is the box it came in. I just kind of spray painted it and then drew what looked like stones. Um, but it's an altar. Uh, I have a lesson specifically on altars because there's so many altars in the old stories. That altar, starting with Cain and Abel and on into Abraham and Jacob. And why that's the big deal about altars? And so we have a whole lesson about why altars. And so this is on when they come in the classroom. Is but that it's a fan? Like, is it got a fan in it's there? A, yeah, it's, it's like a witch's cauldron. It's, they kind of it's made it's like separate. This the, go to the Halloween store. It's open yeah. right now. Or, or they're like five dollars, six dollars, and they you can put them in anything. They're about like that big. They've got two different sizes now. They used to only have one. They're wonderful. This one looks something like this, like a witch's cauldron kind of, and then it's got the fan, and the lights, and the stuff and they've got them to square like mine are to square so you can stick it in anything okay stick it in the box that came in <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah halloween is a great time to grab things you can grab chains i saw the plastic like chains plastic that, and chains. you know they're great for a lot of stories yeah you, you can, can get rats um, rats for the story of Dagon and the temple with the tumors and the rats and you can spray paint them oh, gold you can get all your bones cool. and skeletons for and the dollar store has the big bones now for yeah. dollar tree um, you got a dollar tree okay so yeah Halloween's a great time costumes and stuff we get payroll costumes and all kinds of costumes skeletons and stuff we go for the dollar store Okay, one of the references I gave you on your, the, the last two pages, those of you who are new, the last two pages are resources for you to use. Um, I, I go to this all the time. One that has a lot of these lesson readiness idea is missionbibleclass.org. Now, she works internationally. She's a missionary and she goes to places where they don't have Hobby Lobby and Home Depot and Halloween and all of that. So a lot of her lesson readiness activities don't use much of anything. Sometimes it's just questions. Um, I went to one of her workshops in Oklahoma City. Uh, she said, I, I thought, what do they have? Well, they had some plastic solo cups and some spoons. So she used one of those actually to teach a Bible class session. She drew faces on the spoons and then the, the red cup was the house. It was just simple with the kids. But so use whatever you have. Kids' imaginations are such that anything can become anything, right? It doesn't have to be fancy. All this, 
fancy schmancy pretty stuff you see here is not required to teach God's word, is it? And you're it's, not going to get it all at once. No, this has been 35 years worth. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point, <laughs> especially if you're less experienced at Bible. Don't think you're going to go home and have next week have all this because you're not. Um, when you make something the first time, make it very well and then protect it and you'll use it for years. The, the creation numbers I had 35 years ago when I went, went home from Abilene at their workshop 35 years ago, that's the first thing I made and I've had them there. Those are actual photocopies of, again, of my actual ones, but the color is still good. They were, I put contact paper on them because that's what we had back then. Um, but they're still in good condition because I kept them, but I made them one time. And then you're about constantly reinventing the wheel. I can't emphasize that enough, especially if you're new. You have to be careful about what, what you do. Um, so Mission Bible Class Org has a lot of ideas to get the children ready for the lesson. You kind of have to dig way down there and get it. I forget what she calls it, but she's got a lot of stuff that's, that's simple. It's not, it's, it's none of this stuff, but most of those children are not necessarily Western children living in a Western culture. So, so that was that. Now, one thing I didn't get to last time when we were talking about um, Egyptian culture. Um, when, when we start with Joseph in Egypt, I start bringing in some of the, the, uh, the gods of Egypt. We talk, and I, I don't do them all at once. Again, this is one of those little things that you do that just takes a minute or two or three. We talk about um, Hecht, the god of resurrection. He was in the form of a frog. Um, Newt was the goddess of the sky. Imhotep was the god of medicine. There he is twice. Uh, Khonsu, the protector of the sick. And so I've introduced all these gods. Osiris was the guardian of the Nile, and the Nile was her bloodstream. So by the time we get to the plagues, the kids are familiar with the idea of these Egyptian gods. And there were like 2,000 of them or something ridiculous. So this is one of those slow cultural introductions that we do a little bit at a time. Those of you who weren't here last time, I, I gave a picture of Egyptian wigs and the fact that they, they wore the heavy makeup. There was a reason for it. One thing I didn't mention was how afraid they were of lice, body lice, and they oftentimes shave their entire body. So it makes me think that plague number three, we call it gnats or lice. You know, we're not sure what the word means. I'm thinking maybe it was body lice or head lice because they were so afraid of that. And they took such great lengths to not get those lice. Maybe it was lice. God said, well, here anyway. <laughs> you're going to have them anyway, even if you're all shaved from head to toe. So, um, and every one of those relates to one of the plagues. Oh, Where'd you get those pictures? Online. <laughs> I know, but online, guys. <laughs> I, I don't do Pinterest anymore. It's just online. If I want something, I just say gods of Egypt. <laughs> and boom. Yeah. I, I, and they're they're just there. But I picked some that were related to yeah. the, the Nile was her bloodstream, very first plague. Why didn't she fix herself? <laughs> Maybe why didn't these, these gods of men mm -hmm. sit? Why didn't they help them? They wrote was a god. They thought he was. Well, that was a final plague, wasn't it? We're, we'll, we'll get to these later, um, the plagues. But this is an introduction that I do. I do a little, a little bit of culture when I can, just a little bit, because as those of you who aren't here, we're not, the Bible classes are not a history class, are they? Well, they're, they kind of are, because we're talking about the history of God's people. But God didn't tell us every single thing that ever happened with God's people. He only told us the things that were of theological importance. If you don't understand why a Bible story is there or why it's told from this perspective here and maybe this perspective here, then you need to do more study because there's a reason why God told it to us that way. And he didn't tell us these 9,000 other stories. He told us these because they are of theological importance. The more excited we are, the more deeply we study. Remember our archaeological dig? The more we dig into God's Word, the more we study. It's hard work. It's not exactly hot and sweaty, but you get the picture. The more excited we're going to get about the treasures we find, the more excited we are about the treasures we find, and the more our faith grows, 
the better we're going to be able to relate that to children in a way that makes an impact on him. But again, you don't have to have all this stuff. If you love those children, those children come into your Bible class. You spend time, you spend face-to-face -face time with those children. You talk to them, you love them. And then you teach a Bible story in an age-appropriate way. They will learn. And you love the Bible. and like it's Ab Absolutely. <laughs> yes, they will catch that you love the Bible and that you love God. That's, that's critical. Um, questions about any of this? Somebody had a question last time about my storage, which, yeah, this is an issue. Um, I do have some pictures I can show you. Uh, we've got, oh, actually, it, it's actually quarter till. We're officially done. And it,